Thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I slightly changed the title from my abstract because I found it more suitable. Um, I've heard a lot of interesting things today, and some of the things I've heard we do differently, some of the things we do similar. Um, I might be touching up some things I've heard during my presentation. I will talk about how we did our course curriculum uh, up until last academic year. This year we did some changes to the year and in the next years we will continue these changes in the following years. Um, we have a four year bachelor program. Um, and someone was talking about critical mass and students just before the break. Hmm? Ah, uh, we have about 350 students in total. Uh, so we have some critical mass. And they're all doing only archaeology. Um, our vision is we do practical archaeology, it's the base, field work, doing archaeology, practice based, not lecture based. So we think what's important to do for our students, and if we don't have the lecturers for it, we try to find lecturers to do the teaching in those courses. Um, <coughs> one of our other aims is working digital with digital tools. Um, we focus on skills and understanding of the tools. We try to broaden and evolve knowledge and skills during the course. And interdisciplinarity is also very important within the whole of Saxion, but also in our archaeology course. Um, we have organized our teaching within teams. Those are not courses within those teams. Uh, courses can have several themes within a course. Um, and those courses enhance and can pass broad themes, like for example, archaeological peer uh, knowledge, but also digital tools, cultural heritage, outreach, communication, but also personal development, uh, how to organize a project, how to become a professional. Um, we try to determine, we use didactic methods to understand how the students learn. Um, on the first year, we based mainly on the knowledge level, and as they progress during their studies, they end up doing everything on the dust level, so in a practical, uh, professional, or young professional way, after a candidate, they could do everything within the dust level. Um, so, how do, did we do that, uh, just up until last year? Um, in the first two years, we had a basis. So, all the base courses they needed and all the things, um, prehistory, digital archaeology, a bit of physical geography, uh, a bit of international archaeology, a bit of writing, a bit of communication, presentation, all those broad archaeological things they need to do in separate courses. Um, in the first two years, and this is also presented at the CAA in Siena, um, we had about 21 European credits, only digital archaeology, uh, 21 credits digital archaeology applied, and in other courses there might be some but not necessarily. Um, and an internship and other courses in field school, there might also be some digital archaeology, uh, but that depends on their internship. Um, we focused on, on courses, uh, learning database, learning GIS, learning uh, AutoCAD, for example, learning desktop publishing, uh, like Illustrator, InDesign, etc. Um, one of the challenges we noticed, and I also presented at the CA in general already, that the students come in as digital natives, they know everything how to do gaming on iPads, but they don't understand what we're doing. Most of the teachers are immigrants. They came into a digital world that will slowly become more digital while they've been teaching. They have a more deeper understanding of what they're doing and some intricate knowledge. So that's already a slight challenge when teaching courses. Um, during the third year, we had some specializations more into digital archaeology, more into field archaeology, more material culture studies, um, and heritage management. In the fourth year, you can choose a minor and, in, uh, and choose a thesis subject. Um, and the thesis can be some practical approach, can be digital, but can be also not digital. Um, oh, yeah, within the specialization, we try to learn more advanced digital skills, for example, 3D modeling, uh, database management in, on a more advanced level, some programming, some statistics. Um, that's what we did. We did separate courses for everything. Um, 
but we noticed some things within the curriculum that we decided we need to change. Um, the main thing is that our students think of modules as separate building blocks. I have a daughter of two, so I'm using Duplo. Um, they see each course, they finish the course, and they throw, throw it back in the bin of the courses they had. What we teachers would like to see is a tree of knowledge and skills. Um, all the building blocks build up the whole curriculum. All the courses need to work together. You need to know something about database to understand GIS and vice versa. Uh, you need to understand pottery to understand um, Roman culture. Well, all those things connect. And we've noticed that students tend to follow a module, finish the module, and forget the module. Um, so we decided to think, how can we change our curriculum that students will start integrating the skills and the knowledge within projects so they have better understanding of what they do. Within those courses, we have workshops when they need special things. Well, we also wanted some transparency, a clear schedule, a clear structure, a recognizable structure. Uh, it should be workable, both for teachers and students. Um, and we should think about how to do classes uh, and what kind of assignments, what kind of tests do you need to have that kind of integration. So this is what we came up with. Um, the first year of our bachelor level, so the, um, we didn't do any changes because there was all right at the moment and we don't, didn't need those changes yet. Um, in the second year, we thought of four different building blocks. Our year is divided into four blocks. Each block is 15 credits. Um, and each block has a theme. So in the first theme of the second year, they will be searching for the past uh, by drilling and uh, surveying and uh, combining that into a project with GIS, for example. Um, digging in the past is excavation techniques, uh, presenting the past is how to present the past to fellow archaeologists, but also to the wider public. Um, and then we have the block of Capita Selecta, which we're not doing this year, we'll be doing next year within the second year. Um, people, students can have one obligatory course of digital archaeology, and they can choose the two other courses of five credits. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to show you some first examples, first experience of our first year. Um, just the previous period, uh, we did uh, a project digging in the past. Um, it's divided into three main things. Uh, one of the things was period, period specific knowledge and skills based on the late medieval period. So some pottery, some historical changes, some archaeological changes, some landscape things. Um, in relation to that, excavation techniques, what skills do we have? Uh, what process are there in the, in the archaeological excavation within the Dutch quality system? Uh, what kind of excavation strategies do you need? Um, and how do you interpret um, um, the excavation? And each group within the course got an old project that was uh, already finished years ago. Uh, we had the archaeological data, the excavation, the, the GIS uh, material. And we wanted the students to come up with how are you going to do this excavation on this area, what techniques, how do you plan your, um, your, your trenches, um, how does your database look, so develop a database as a group for your excavation, fill the database with the data that's already there, that was the CSV files, um, interpret the features and the finds, and try to get some phasing and um, understand what was happening during the excavation and write a small evaluation report how to finish up uh, evaluating and also interpreting the excavation how much money do you need for it and also how do you get rid of the finds in the data how do you carefully deposit it somewhere so people can also use them in the future um, every day, every week during eight weeks was the same so Monday and Tuesday were regular classes Wednesday there were no scheduled classes, they had to work on their own. And on Thursday and Friday they were working on the project as a group with teachers present and also giving workshops, for example, on a database, how to develop a database, how to write queries, um, how to query your own database, 
how to make GIS maps, um, get some small statistics like the average number of fines, not too difficult because they won't understand or they will run away screaming. Um, and in the end, they develop a portfolio with all the data as a group and an individual uh, evaluation of the project. Um, what we hope to achieve that they get some learning by experiencing the whole archaeological process. So that's why some of the didactic things that is more or less included is the experimental learning theory, where you go through each different phase within a project. You get some experience, you observe, you conceptualize everything that's happening, but also you experiment with, for example, the archaeological data, uh, the archaeological features, the archaeological finds, but also the archaeological database or the GIS things. Um, so how did it all work out? And I put the old uh, way of teaching to the right and the new way of teaching to the left. The integrated approach goes to a higher level of understanding. It mostly shows how or does. Within the modular approach, it's mostly we know things, we know how to do it, but we don't know how to do it very practical. One of the things that could be a problem we found out in the project is that you need intrinsic motivation to do it as a project, to do some self-work. Uh, when you have a test or an exam at the end, there will be motivation by, I have to get to get the test. Um, but in the end, all the groups got there and, and, and started working together. And they had a better enhanced understanding of how to apply databases, how to apply GIS, how to apply understanding and excavation. And if you have a module, uh, for example, learn the buttons in QGIS, or then it's monkey see, monkey do, but they don't understand what they are doing. Um, the nice thing is there, there's some room for creativity within the integrated approach. Um, one of the things we're not sure about, whether it's a good or a bad thing, that there's different skill or knowledge levels within the groups of the project. Uh, if you have a test, all students are on the same level. Um, within those group work, some people go beyond what we did before, and some people work a bit on the low side. Um, so that's something, I think it's better that people have better understanding of what's happening uh, uh, and why it's happening. Uh, and I think I'm running out of time. Um, so I'll let you read most of the things here. Um, but one of the things I liked really is that the group work also led people to start talking to each other. Um, how does a database work? How do I make tables? Why do I make tables? And in some groups, the best person started making the table for the database. But in some groups, people started talking to each other. Because we don't, all of us don't understand it, so we're going to do it together. And I think that's one of the nice things of trying to integrate uh, learning digital archaeology within group projects uh, that are real-world things. Well, thank you.